Welcome to your Celebrated Math 108. In this lecture video, we're going to talk about applications uh, regarding to distance rate, time, interest, and average. So in this particular video, we're going to take a look at use a linear equation to solve what we so-called the distance rate and time problems. So recall from the previous lecture videos when we were looking at a lot of formulas, distance equal to rate times time, that particular formula. So this is the key formula we will be using um, in this particular lecture videos. So let's take a look. Um, a lot of these problems regarding to distance rate and time goes by scenarios, you know, reading the question and see what is going on. What, what is a problem trying to say? Um, based on those type of scenarios, um, that's how we will um, that's how we will write out the equations so this problem in particular let's take a look uh, Eric took four hours to drive to a rock concert on the way home he was able to increase his average speed by 16 miles per hour and made the return drive only three hours find his average speed on the return drive so this particular problem, the on the computer it create this table for us. Okay, so this is the only problem I have have this table. We will create a similar table to this with other problems, but I, you know, I at least want to show y'all what it looked like um, for y'all at one time. How do we write out these type of table? So I'm not too big on the table I normally just write it out look like a table but not quite the same so let me kind of explain this problem real quick and then we will see uh, how we go about doing this so basically he's going to concert so let's say this is home all right from home to concert From home to concert, he drove four hours. On the way home, so from concert back home, he just increases speed by 60 miles per hour, and he, it only takes him three hours. So basically, return drive, excuse me, the time on the original drive to the concert, it says four hours. All right, the return drive, is three hours why is only three hours because he drive faster so it says he increases average speed by 16 so if we assume the original drive on the way to concert speed is x coming back increased by 16 so that must be x plus 16 so based on the information given you know we can fill out the table this far but how do I write out the actual equation? Okay, that's this by scenario base. The scenario will tell you how to write out the equation. So basically what we're saying is, on the way to concert and on the way back, um, he taken four hours to go there, three hours to come back because he drive a little bit faster on the way home. Regardless, the distance, regardless the speed, the distance on the way to concert or the or the homework or the Hawks learning call them original drive the original drive is going to equal to the distance on the way home the return drive right from home to the concert from concert by home don't matter how fast you're driving the distance got to be exactly the same so and, and up here we say distance is always equal to rate times time so the original drive rate is x times is 4 so that will be rate rate x times the time 4 so that will be 4x set it equal to this is 4x set it equal to the distance for the return drive is rate x plus 16 
times time, which is 3. So when we use 3 times these two terms, those two terms got to be in the parentheses. So the, re so the distance for the return drive is 3 times x plus 16. So remember, <clears throat> all these problems got something to do with distance. And these distance will be set it up as scenario-based, different type of scenarios. So we fill out the table. Uh, I basically already write out the equation for you. Use the table from, from part one to write the linear equation. So our equation is going to be 4x equal to 3 times parentheses x plus 16. Distance on the way to the concert is equal to the distance on the way home. So that's what this equation represents. Now the last step, solve for the equation. So it looks like my second term, I only got two terms here. My second term has parentheses, so we will use our distributed property. So 3 times x times 16, that will give me 3x and the positive 48. Move the 3x over, so that will give me 4x minus 3x, which is x equal to 48. All right. So what does the question ask? Find his average speed on the return drive. So his return drive, so x is on the way to the concert. Coming home will be plus 16. So that will be 48 plus 16, which is, four, which is 64 mile per hour. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at another ones. All right, the Browns are moving across the country. Mr. Brown leaves 4.5 hours before Mrs. Brown. <clears throat> if he averaged 70 mile per hour and she averaged 80 mile per hour, how long will it take Mrs. Brown to overtake Mr. Brown? So overtake. This scenario, something called the overtake, that means before you can overtake somebody, you have to actually catch up with somebody. So remember now, Mr. Brown left the house four and a half hour before Mrs. Brown. However, Mrs. Brown is driving 80 mile per hour, which is faster than Mr. Brown, 70. So that means eventually Mrs. Brown will catch up to Mr. Brown. So I'm going to put this on the side. Okay, so this is Mr. Brown and this is Mrs. Brown. So Mr. Brown went, gone somewhere. Mrs. Brown left the house four and a half hours later. But Mr. Brown is going at 70 miles per hour, but Mrs. Brown is going way faster. So eventually, Mrs. Brown is going to be catching up, okay, to Mr. Brown. So overtake means before you can pass somebody, you have to be exactly, you have to catch up to them. The catching up to them basically is saying the distance. Remember now they left at the same place, going in the towards the same direction. So before you, so when you overtake, that means when you catch up to somebody, that means the distance got to be the same. So this problem, just like the previous one, the distance for Mr. Brown eventually will equal to the distance with Mrs. Brown. So the scenario tells me how I need to write out my equation. So we just got to translate uh, for other parts. So this problem, I got Mr. Brown and Mrs. Brown. All right, the problem gave me their speed, so I got rate. My speed is 70 and 80. All right, let's take a look at the time. Mr. Brown leave four and a half hour before Mrs. Brown. So basically, who stays on the road longer? Who, who is actually driving on the road longer? That would be Mr. Brown. So... If I'm comparing between these two items for the time, this is translating for the time, four and a half more, Mr. Brown is on the road, four and a half more than Mrs. So since Mrs. is listed at the end, 
we can say she is X. Mr. Brown will be 4.5 plus X because Mr. Brown is on the road four and a half hour more than Mrs. Brown. So this problem, how long will it take Miss Brown to overtake? So we need to look for the time for Mrs. Brown. So once I translate for their time, Okay, let's write out the equation regarding to distance. Distance is rate times time. So that will be 70 times those two terms, put them in the parentheses. So that equal to 80 times x, rate times time. Now we solve for x. All right, so let's see, 7, 70 times 4.5. Uh, let me see, 315. So that's 315. 70 times x is 70x. Set it equal to 80x. All right, I got three terms here. I'm going to move my 70x to the right side. That becomes subtracting or negative. So that works. 80 minus a 70x will give me 10x equal to 315. Divide both sides by 10. My answer x equals 31.5. So, X representing the time for Mrs. Brown. So, how long would it take Mrs. Brown to overtake? It would take her 31.5 hours. All right. So, catching up overtake or catching up with someone, somebody means the distance are the same. All right. This one, let's take a look. So remember now, all these problems I'm going to show you is the equation is, is, is about distance. So what we are translating is either the translating for the speed or translating for the time. And you'll, and you'll begin to notice that. So for this one, two planes which are 32, 25 miles apart flying towards each other. So this scenario is what I call the traveling towards one another. The previous are catching up with one another. This is traveling towards each other. Traveling, travel towards each other. So what that means is, okay, I got two planes which are 32, 25 miles apart flying towards each other. So let's call this plane number one. And this one is plane number two. They're not going to collide because they, dip, they can fly at different altitude. So plane one, plane two, flying towards one another. Okay, so when they say they are 32, 25 miles apart, that means the total distance between them, the total distance between them is 32, 25 miles. Okay, so basically this problem, basically the way we're going to write out the equation is saying the distance for one of the plane, that's called the plane number one, plus the distance for plane number two. When they're flying toward each other and they are 32, 25 miles apart, that means the distance for each plane traveled towards one, one another will eventually equal to 32, 25. Right? <clears throat> so from the beginning, they are this many miles apart. When they traveling towards each other, okay, by the time they meet, both both plane has traveled 3225. So now we just need to be able to figure out or translate the distance for each plane. You cannot take 3225 divided by 2 because the problem never said both plane travel the same distance. Okay? So let's see how we can translate this. So I got so I'm calling them plane number one. 
and plank number two. All right, so I got this. I um I got rate. I got time. So, if they pass each other in five hours, that means flying towards one another. Five hours later, they pass each other. So that means both airplane has traveled five hours. So this problem we got to translate for their speed. How do I translate their speed differ by 95 miles per hour? How do I translate their speed or differ by 25 miles per hour? Differ means difference. Their difference is by 95 miles, 95. So let me try this, okay? So what it's saying is, Something minus something is equal to 95. Their speed is different by 95. 95 is a positive number, so that means something subtract something is equal to 95. So, so the big number subtract a small number is equal to a positive 95. So if I let one of these two numbers equal to x, so let's say this is x, what would the other number be? So, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna call this a box, okay? You know what? Let's not do call a box. I always get confused. Let's call this question mark. So their speed differ by ninety five. That means something subtract something equal ninety five. So if I let one of the two speed to be x, what would the what would the other one be? What would my question mark be? Since my question mark is negative, I can move over here. That means move the 95 to the other side. So my question mark come over to the right, become positive. X is still X. When 95 come over, it becomes negative. Okay. So something subtract something equal 95. That's, that's what I mean by their speed differ by 95. Right? So this question mark is x minus 95. Let's go back here. So if I said plane number one speed is x, plane number two will be x minus 95. Okay. So now I got speed and I got time for each plane. Now I can write out my equation. The distance for plane number one is rate x times the time 5. x times 5, 5x. Plus, this plus means the two distance together equal to 3225. Plus, the distance for plane number 2, take my rate times the time. So that will be 5 times parentheses, x minus 95. All right, equal to 3225. All right, so let's solve for x. So just like the very first problem, the table is basically, um, this is very similar to the table they draw. I just don't quite draw the same way. All right, use the scenario to set up my, use a scenario so I know how to write out my equation and we translate for either the speed or the time. All right, second term, do a, distribution so the first term is still 5x plus 5 times x is 5x positive 5 times negative 95 positive 5 times negative 95 that gave me negative 475 equal to 32 to 5 combine like term this is 10x let's go ahead and move my negative 475 over at the same time uh, let's see what I get. 3225 plus 475. 3225 plus 475. That's 3700 divided by 10. That will be 370. All 
right? So X representing the speed for plane number one. So the question is, what is the speed of each? So plane number one is 370. Therefore, plane number two is 370 minus 95. 370 minus 95. You remember their speed is different by 95. So pl another plane is 275. So if you subtract the two, their speed differ by 95. So that's what that uh, this translating part represents. Alrighty. Let's look at a couple more scenarios. So this one is, this one we just did is traveling towards each other. Let's say a train leaves San Diego at 1 p.m. A second train leaves the same city in the same direction at 4 p.m. So right away, okay, right away, right away, we go in the same direction again, just leaving at different time. So this is very similar to Mr. and Mrs. Brown problem, okay? One leave before the other. So this is an another overtake example. The second train travels 78 per mile per hour faster than the first one. So the second train, even though leaving at 4 p.m., goes faster, will eventually overtake or pass the first train. Okay. And this always told me it's going to overtake them at 6 p.m. So what's the speed of each? All right, so we got the second train and the first train. So let's just say first train, second train. So since um, since this is another overtake problem, overtake got to be going the same direction, okay, just at different time. So since an overtake problem, that means that that means the second train got to catch up to the first train. When they catch up, since we're leaving at the same city, going the same direction, the distance of the first train will equal to the distance of the second train. Right? Before you can overtake somebody, before you can pass somebody, the you have to catch up to them. Catch up to them means the distance aren't the same. All right, so we know how to write out the equation, so let's translate. All right, speed and time. We know from the translation, from the comparison, the second train is 70 miles per hour faster than the first one. So the first it lists at the end, so that will be x for the speed. The second trend is 78 faster than, just like more than, means plus. All right. So that's my translation for the speed. Now let's take a look at the time. Overtake at 6 p.m. So second one will pass the first one at 6 p.m. So how long is each train on the track? How long has the first train been on the track? already if the second trend if the second trend is catching up to the first one at 6 p.m. then the first one is leaving at 1 p.m. so that means the first trend has been on the track for five hours right six hour six o'clock minus four, one o'clock five hour difference five hour on the track so how long has the second train being on the track. So that will be 6 o'clock minus 4 p.m. That will be two hours. So this problem is a little bit different than the Mr. And Mrs. Brown. Mr. And Mrs. Brown was asking how long does it take to overtake. This one is asking, this one is asking for the speed. So it told me the time. It told me how long it takes the second train to overtake the first one. Okay? So so we, by looking at the time, we figure out we can figure the first train being on the track for five hours, 
the second champion on the track for two hours before you overtake. So we got our rate and time. So let's write out my equation. Time distance equal to rate times time. So that will be five times seventy eight plus x. Is that equal to rate times time? That will be two x. Oops, sorry. All right, let's multiply this out. Five times seventy eight. Five times x. What's five times seventy? 390. So that would be 390 plus 5x equal to 2x. Um, hold on a minute. Something ain't right. Ooh, something ain't right. What's the speed of each two track? 78 per hour faster than. Oh, Lord, jeez. I got them backwards. I said the first train was x. And I wrote second trend to be x. I am so sorry. First trend is x. Second trend. Second trend is the one overtake the first one. So that will be 78 plus x. My, my apology. So let me switch this around. Okay. Let me switch this around. I mean, it make a big difference. It does make a big difference. Alright, the first train is 5x, because right here, equal to the second train is 2 times 78 plus x. So if I multiply it out, rate times time is 5x, right? Rate times time is 2 times 78 plus x, so that will be 156 plus 2x. Move the positive 2x over. To get my to get all my x's on the same side, that gave me three x equal to one fifty six. Divide both sides by three. My answer x equals fifty two. All right. So, what's the speed of the two trains? So x representing the speed of the first train. So that's fifty two. Second train is seventy eight mile per hour faster than the first one. So if I take 78 plus 52, the second train was going at 130 miles per hour. Okay, so that's the speed of each train. All right, let's take a look at this particular example. April has four hours to spend training for an upcoming race. She completes her training by running Full speed the distance of a race and walking back the same ooh, see right there she's gonna walk back the same distance to cool down so the distance of the the distance of the running is gonna be the same as the distance of walking back so right away I established the distance are equal the distance of her running is going to equal to the distance of her walking back to cool down. If she runs at a speed of 8 mile per hour and walk back at 2 mile per hour, how long she, how long she she's planned to spend walking back? All right. So we got running and we got walking back. All right. I got rate and I got time. So running speed is at 8 mile per hour, walking back speed is at 2. So it doesn't say the time for each one. You cannot put 4 and 4 right here. That would be incorrect because the 4 hour representing uh, is, four hour to, is a 4 hour to spend training for an upcoming race. It does not say she spent 4 hours of running or four hours of walking. So the four hour is the total amount of time. The four hours are the total amount of time she spent doing both of these things. Okay? So let me explain this real quick. This is one of the most important concepts in algebra. This is called, well, this is what I call it, you and I. Half 
ten dollar concept. If you and I have ten dollars together, you have seven dollars. How much will I have? How much will I have? Well, we know you is seven plus I. I don't know is equal to ten dollars, right? You and I together have ten dollars. How much will I have? So to get this question mark by itself, all we're gonna do is move the seven to the other side. So the question mark is gonna be the ten minus seven, which most of y'all will say three already. But three is not the point. The point is, I, the question mark, gets the total, which is ten dollars together, minus what you got. Okay, so if I will say this time you got X dollars then how much will I have that well I will have the total I will have the total 10 minus what you got which is X and that will equal to what I got I got the total minus what you got Okay, so this concept is very similar to this one I explained it. Okay, it's, this is called you and I together have ten dollars. So right now, back to our problem. Where is our problem? Our problem says you and I, you and I, you is wrong, I is walk together have four hours. So. If the run is X amount of hours, then the walk got to be the total four hours minus what you got, which is X. The total amount of time four hour minus the time it's been running, that will be four minus X. Now, can I do a vice versa? Can I say walking is X, running is four minus X? Yes, you can. It doesn't matter. You just got to pick somebody to be X the other one is the total minus what the other one gets okay we use this concept um, pretty frequently so now I got time I got rate then the distance of running is 8 times X which is AX equal to the distance of walking is rate times time which is 2 times parenthesis 4 minus X so let's do a dis quick distribution that will give me ax equal to 8 minus 2x so if i move my negative 2x over to the other side that become positive so that will end up with 10x on the other side 8 up on the right side divide both sides by 10 8 divided by 10 uh, 0.8 sure that'll be fine so that means you spend 0.8 hours. Well, the question is that the question is asking how long she she's planning to spend walking back. So basically, we are saying running turned out to be 0.8 hours. So how long does she plan on walking back? So that would be four minus 0.8. Four minus 0.8 is 3.2 hours walking back. Will be the answer. All right. So we're talking about a couple of different concepts uh, in this lecture video. We also talk a little bit about different scenarios helping us set up our write out our equations. Okay, so this is something we work on over time. In in module eleven, we will do some of these similar questions again. Um, then in module eleven, we will use two different variables to set up the equation. But again, sometimes it is easier to only use one type of variable. So uh, I will try to show you in module 11, try to use two different variables and one variable from time to time to write out those equations, um, to translate those, um, those problems back then. All right. So uh, that will conclude this lecture video on distance, rate, and time application problems. Thank you for watching.